Yo, what's going on? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. I mean, it's time for another live stream. Today is Thursday, 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 February 29th, 2024. It is a leap year. So today is the leap day. I mean, I guess it's leap year all year long, but today is the actual leap day. The day that we tack on at the end of February, which I think is kind of weird. A couple of things that I feel like we've all encountered and probably thought of in our entire lives. Why does February only have 28 days when several other months have 31? Doesn't make any sense at all. Um, and for the leap day, why do we stick it at the end of February and not in, at the end of Jan at the end of December? You know what I mean? Give us an extra day in between Christmas and New Year and New Year's for the holidays, right? Can you imagine how much more exciting leap day would be if it was the if it made like kids winter breaks one day longer? I feel like we're really messing it up. I don't I don't really like having February 29th. I feel like we should have February 29th every every year. We should probably have a February 30th every year. Make every month 30 days. What does the math work out on that one? I'm not sure. But uh, we got to do some reconfiguring. The seasons are all messed up anyway. It was 70 degrees two days ago and then 20 degrees the next. Still 20 degrees right now. Super cold. It's all messed up. So let's just rewrite it all. You know what I mean? Or they should all be in increments of seven. Every month should be five weeks or four weeks. I don't know. The math is all weird. You know? But anyway, <laughs> today I got a fun show. It's not going to be all astronomy based. Uh, today we got a package from Say Sky. I have an idea of what it is because a lot of times when brands send me stuff, I get like notifications about it. Like people don't tell me a lot of times that they're sending me stuff. People that I have a relationship with. I don't like it when people just send me stuff if we don't have a relationship already. But I know them over there. They know me. They've been sending me stuff for a while. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, you get like a notification saying like, hey, your order has been received or your order is shipping. And it shows you all the things that are in there. And then when they're sending me product to test and review, then it's usually like, then like a special discount code is applied. So it zeroes out. Um, so I, I have an idea of what this, hopefully it's what I think it is because I think you're going to like it. But first, before we get to that, let's ahead everyone listening in on the audio-only version of the podcast. Uh, hopefully you guys are having a warm run today or a cool run today. I feel like, like I was saying, the weather's all messed up. Some places are unusually hot. Some places are unusually cold. Some places are unusually wet and some are unusually dry. Everything's wrong. Hopefully though, when you're out there running, at least balmy. That's what I wish for you. And for everyone else watching this later but not live, that laundry ain't going to fold itself, but you're in luck because this is the number one podcast to listen to while you're folding laundry and catching up on those other household chores. So, all right, let's see who else we got in here. We got Sega Dreamcast that says, happy Thursday, everyone. Um, <laughs> Sarah Julia Studio says, uh, the shoe shelf looking organized and filled today. Yes, so I finished filming all the product and comparable shoes for the Mach 6 video. I got all the new Meta Speeds in here. Um, I nudged everything. So it's kind of like a little bit more organized. I could, I could have done a better job over here. You see that some spots are, could use some, a little more attention, but I'm feeling, feeling overall pretty good about, about stuff. So that makes me, that makes me happy. Um, all right. Andrew Cho says endorphin, the endorphin pro four and next week going to order Metaspeed sky. I need to hide these boxes for one season first. Dude, I just spent $400 at Saucony. I've been trying to contact Saucony for a long time. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but Saucony moved its headquarters. I'm not going to say they were doing that annoying thing that companies do when instead of laying people off, they just make everyone move somewhere else. And if you don't want to move, that's on you, not them. But Saucony's headquarters used to be in Boston. Then they moved everyone to a city in Michigan. I don't know. It was. It's not one of the ones you would think of. It's not Detroit. It's not... Uh, Grand Rapids, it's not Ann Arbor, not any, any, not any of those. It's another one, one that I, I always forget what it is. But it kind of makes sense because they're owned by a big parent company. Uh, and that parent company, I think they do Wolverine Boots and a couple of other brands are already housed in a big office building. So they're kind of moving everything together. In that process, my normal contact over at Saucony no longer works at Saucony. That person's elected not to leave Boston. And I've been messaging the Saucony 
Instagram account. I've been like, can you guys, can somebody just email me, please? No, no response at all. So I'm like, whatever. I waited until the day it dropped, which was, I think, today or yesterday. And I bought Endorphin Pro 4 and Endorphin Speed 4. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I, was, I was very pleasantly surprised to see that the Endorphin Pro 4 is still 225 It's an amazing price if the shoe is still as good as the Endorphin Pro 3 was. So that will be arriving March 9th because I chose standard shipping. I, didn't, I don't need expedited shipping. My, <clears throat> my parents are coming in next week. So uh, they're coming to visit. So I'm not going to have as much time to be doing a lot of testing anyway. So if they come out, if the shoes come after my parents leave, that'll, that'll work, you know? All right. Uh, who else is here today? We got um, Martha's in here. Leona's here. Leona's like, it says, I, I was thinking about all the babies that are or will be born today. You know what's weird? So uh, one of my daughter's friends is a leap day baby. So it's her birthday today. She turns three. And then um, also uh, I was listening to two completely different things. On the Today Show, they were like interviewing, you know, like the people that wait outside with signs and stuff. They were interviewing a, pa a pair of twins that were Leap Day baby twins. I'm like, that's got to be pretty rare. And then I was on my run today, I was listening to... Uh, I don't know what they call it. Uh, 10 Junk Miles puts it out. They do like a daily like morning check-in kind of uh, podcast, kind of like this. It's a little bit shorter. Um, but they were talking about how uh, one of the hosts grew up with a pair of Leap Day twins. So I didn't meet any of them, but I'm hearing two stories of Leap Day twins on the same day. It's Leap Day, so I guess it makes sense. But I feel like that's that's... Super, super rare. Maybe? I don't know. Matt Byer says, uh, Hey, CoFam, 10 times 400. Man, you guys are doing so many 400s. 10 times 400 with 30 seconds recovery, 647 per mile average. And then 10 times 200 with 20, 20 second recovery. That's like, that's an insult. <laughs> 10 times 20 with 10, 10 times 200 with 20 second recovery at 659 per mile average for 6.7 miles total today. Not bad for a feels like temp of 10 degrees. I, I, oh, Matt, I'm, I'm glad you made it through that safe. I feel like trying to do 400s and 200s in 10 degrees Fahrenheit, that's like a recipe for a pulled hammy. <laughs> All right. Uh, Man and Runs with the shoe question of the day. Uh, Man and Runs says, just finish the S Lab Spectre review and you reference it as a good tempo shoe. Would the stability elements make it a good race day shoe for adrenaline users like me? Um, yeah, I think so. I think so for sure. Um, it's not stable. Uh, it's not wobbly like other race shoes can be, I think is a better way to put it, you know? Um, but if you're like, uh, if you're using the adrenaline, I think that that could be a, a good option for you. Um, and I feel like if you really like the adrenaline, then I think that the Spectre could be a nice bump up for you in terms of what it's providing. It's going to be, it's, there's, there's a lot that's going to translate well. Because the Spectre is a little bit on the firm side as far as like my favorite tempo day shoes or a shoe that I'd want to run in for a marathon distance. And so I think it could, but the, also I think the same thing about the Adrenaline as far as what it, it is as a daily trainer. So I think a lot of that can translate over really well. Mm, all right. Let's keep, let me scroll down and catch up with you guys. General Triangle says, for those with Garmin watches, there's a fun leap day badge today for an activity of at least 29 minutes long. Oh, I like that. I see what they did there. That's fun. I did go for 29 minutes today, or more than that, but I did 29 minutes. Today I was testing the Garmin 165 against the Coros Pace 3. I feel like those are going to be the two watches that people are looking at a lot. Um... I will tell you that I find the Coros Pace 3 to be more accurate. Not by a lot, but it's got the dual band, and I do think the dual band makes a difference. A lot of the places that I run out here, it doesn't matter because it's like wide open spaces. Uh, not a lot to confuse the GPS. But when I did the Garmin 165 versus the Garmin 265, 
in Bussy Woods. It was very different. It was off by like a third of a mile. After as, I think in like, mm, as soon as like six or seven miles, almost at the full lap, I noticed it was off by a lot, you know? Sorry, I got something stuck in my teeth. It's bugging me. Mm. Oh, Steve says, hey, I appreciate the shout out in the description. Having a lot of fun being the dogs of Florida. So I put in the description for the live stream today. Um, Steve's dogs I see while running Instagram account. He's already got so many. It's very fun. A lot of cute dogs, good dogs, good boys in that one. Um, I met a lot of dogs today too. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was because it was so cold yesterday. But today on the run, on the route that I ran, which was through some parks, uh, and there is a dog park within that kind of larger area, but um, there was a lot of people that seemed to be kind of like training their hunting dogs. So they were letting them really far off leash. Um, but you could tell that they're trained hunting dogs because they were able to like, the person would like yell something when they saw me coming and the dogs would be doing whatever they were doing and all of a sudden they would poke their heads up from the tall grasses, kind of look around and then the guy would say something and they'd all just kind of like sit. Even though I kind of wanted them to come over and start sniffing and saying hi and stuff. But you know, that's, that's what responsible dog owners would do. Um, so there was a lot of hunting dogs out today a lot of people just walking regular non hunt, not, I guess, non sporting dogs, you know? So it was fun. It was a good day. It was a good day. So a lot of good dogs out there. Um, Benjamin Erickson says, Hey, co training for my first marathon, and I'm struggling to find how much water is in those cups. How much water should I be sipping to practice? I say about four ounces. Four ounces is going to be a little bit, is how about how much they should be putting in the cups? Um, depending on how you grab it or how they fill it, it might be more, it might be less. Just something that you're going to have to be aware of, but about four is right. Sometimes if it's full, really full, when you grab it, you know, you'll knock some of the water out so it'll spill on your hand and stuff. But there's definitely been races where the cup was more full than I was expecting and you just knock it back and all of a sudden it's like it's all up in your nose. <laughs> then that'll surprise you a little bit, you know. Uh, Martha wants to know, Co, does your dog park have separate fenced off areas according to weight? The one adjacent to the park club around has two such enclosures. Seems wise. Oh, I don't know. I've never been into that dog park before. Um, but it's a very big, just like fenced in area that dogs can run around in. So it looks like fun. But I don't know. I do like the idea of separating them by weight. Although, Buddy was a smaller dog. He was a little bit overweight. But, um... He was a smaller dog, medium size, maybe small, medium, um, but he thought he was a big dog, you know, and he was always friends with the big dogs that thought they were lap dogs. It was weird how that worked out, right? Like a little freaky Friday kind of thing. Fiona 1977 said, Kieran from the Run Testers ran a solo marathon just to test a Brooks higher here in Elite Four. Crazy or crazy impressive? It's a little bit of both. Um, I think uh, it'd be a fun shoe to take uh, if I were doing a marathon distance run. I think that that'd be fine. If I were trying to PR or run fast, I'd feel like towards the end I'd be pretty grumpy about it. Um, I just don't... It's. Mm, well, while I don't say the words as firmly as Thomas did, I'm very much in line with what Thomas was saying. You know, it's like, I'd like to see some more innovation there, you know? Vanessa Martinez wants to know, is there any practical way to prevent your nose from running when you're exercising outside in the cold? No, I don't think so. Um, I was thinking about that today and I was just like, because I was coming up on a lot of people walking their dogs. And, you know, a lot of times it's, uh, you know, sometimes you give a little bit of a cough if you're not sure about that dog and it seems a little bit too far away from the owner kind of thing just to announce your presence a little bit. 
I didn't have to do that today because my nose was running like crazy. It's the worst when it's the kind of like in between temperature where it's cold enough that I have to wear a face covering. Um, and sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. Because then when I take it on and off, the like, the relative humidities and all that stuff just like really mess up my <laughs> my sinuses, I guess. And so just an extra runny on those days. So. TJ everybody says that uh, when Kieran did the test of the I'm Hearing Elite 4, he said he was pretty grumpy towards the end. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. All right. Midlife Runner says he's doing day one of carb load. Midlife, you're getting ready for Woodlands. Is that right? Is that what it is? Making another sub three attempt. He, has, he went with 600 plus grams of carbs. Definitely going to positive split this carb carb load. Does that mean you're going to go even more in the second half or positive split means you're doing worse. So you're not going to be able to eat as much. 600 is a lot. That's just, I mean, I'm sure it's the right number, but it just, it seems like so many, you know what I mean? You're, you're half, you're like half a bag of sugar. <laughs> well, wait, a kilo, how much is a kilo? A kilo is like one point, how many pounds? 1.2 pounds, 1.4 pounds, something like that. So you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's like half a pound. Like half a pound of sugar, <laughs> half a bag. <laughs> Getting to run says, the real reason I wear gloves is because of the running nose. Who made a, someone made a reel about that the other day and it was really good. Um, I, sh I wish I had, I should have bookmarked that somehow, but that was a good one. Oh, a kilo is 2.2 .2 pounds. Okay, so no, never mind. So if you're at 600, I don't know. I can't do the math. So I don't know how many, uh, how much sugar that, how, how many, I don't, I don't know, like in bags of sugar, how much is 600 grams of carbs? It just sounds like so much. Patrick Smith says, I am always carb loading. Thanks, donuts. Donuts are a great way to carb load, I feel like. Maybe there's too much fat in them if you're for the purpose of carb loading, cause then you don't want to have a surge in fat in your diet. If you're not used to that, cause that could also cause problems, you know, not that fat in a donut is bad, but you know, I do love donuts. <laughs> Mark's like, you guys are a little too confident about how much a kilo is. Why do you guys know that? <laughs> hmm. And Luca Vernier says, good evening from Italy. I follow you since years. You inspire me. Well, good evening to you as well. Hope you're having a good day. Or hopefully you had a good day. Uh, by the way, that reminds me. I have an interview today. It's going to be in Spanish, but there'll be an interpreter. I don't know if the interviewer is interpreting or if there'll be an interpreter. But I got to leave early today for that. Not early, but I just got to get ready. Um, but yeah. So that'll be, that should be fun. And as long as, uh, we're talking about scheduling, uh, Monday, my kids don't have school for some reason. So, uh, we might be in Iowa and then we might be traveling back on Monday. So, um, no live stream on Monday, just so you guys know. Mm. All right. Michael, I says, don't forget about the country donuts. Yeah. I think I need to go back. I haven't been to Country Donuts in a while. I think I should probably go back. Maybe for the next Bussy Woods Run Club, um, I'll bring Country Donuts next time. We did Spunky Dunkers, which is a fun word, if not a bit of a naughty word to say, depending on what country you're in. Um, but we'll go with Country Donuts next time. We can compare for anyone that goes to both, you know. All right, let's get let's get to the box. Eliza says, "Box, box, box." All right, we got something I think is going to be very fun from Say Sky. Um, I don't remember them their stuff coming in like a Say Sky box last time, so I really like that. And you know, it's one of those things where it's like, boy, this is awfully close to the size and shape of a shoe box at this point. But I don't know; it's not shoes.
All right. I think I got all the tape. Oh, there's even more tape. I still think I'm going to have a hard time getting this open. All right, there we go. That last bit helped. All right, we got some paperwork in here. Guys, this is what I thought it was. All right, hold on. Let's do this, like, let's do this in order. I feel like it's better to do this in order. Okay. All right. First, let's take a look at this. I love this pattern. We got a shirt from Say Sky. Uh, with doodles all over it. I absolutely love these doodles. Um, I just feel like there's a lot of... A lot of the artists that I like are doodlers. I don't know why that is, but... I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look into it too far. But I love these doodles. It says Say Sky all over it. They're stick figures. Some of them are running. A lot of them are running. Some of them in bucket hats. Can you see that? Um, some of them are just saying hi holding hands, um, but it does say Say Sky in red on the back. I like that. And then it's got a little Say Sky badge right on uh, where the pocket would be. There is no pocket on this one though, but it is a running material and it feels really nice. I don't like this. A lot of times you have to worry about when there's a lot of print or color on a garment, a running garment, sometimes it makes the garment not breathable, but this feels very breathable to me. Mm. Jen Run Triangle says, cool, it feels like where's Waldo on a shirt. Fun. Uh, Zach, Zachary Hymas says, looks like a bunch of doodle Spongebobs. Oh, okay, there we go. I like that. And Jen Run Triangle says, smell test. Smells like running clothes. Just smells like uh, whatever the material. What's, what's the material on this? Does it say? Maybe I'll have to look. Um, yeah, but these are Say Sky Responsible, it says. And uh, to be Say Sky Responsible, to get the responsible icon, that's right here, uh, has to be at least 40% recycled, renewable, biodegradable, organic certified, or with natural fibers that are processed responsibly. So that's good. And the material is made out of. 92% recycled, recycled polyester, 8% spandex, and the lining, at least on the shorts, is 100% nylon. There's matching shorts, guys. Look at that. Um, pocket, it's lined. So there's a liner in here, uh, very soft and comfy. Drawstring as well, so we got that. Um, no interior, oh, there is an interior key pocket, little guy right here, and then a zipper pocket in the back. Uh, could I fit my phone in there? It's going to be tight. I don't know. But you could definitely fill it gels and a hotel key card or a bank card. I think I might be able to fit my iPhone 13 mini if I really stretched it. But I don't, I don't think this is a phone pocket. Especially with how light these materials are. So, t-shirt and matching shorts. Steven C says, that is quite the full kit look. But remember, that's not all. There's more. There's also a set of pants, <laughs> matching pants. This one has the same pocket on the back. Is it any bigger? I'm not sure. It feels like it's about the same size pocket. It might be a tiny bit bigger because I feel like the phone was trying to fit in there. Um, but it's not lined unlike the uh, shorts, but it does have two regular drop-in pockets with zippers on each side. So you got that. Say Sky badge on the left thigh. Say Sky word mark in red on the back of the right calf. So left thigh, right calf. And it's a little bit tapered at the bottom, but not a zipper. Oh, it is a zipper. Whoa. Get it on and off over your shoes nice and easy. They are a little bit uh, 
they do seem like they're a bit, a bit of a more relaxed fit. Andrew Scott wants to know if the pants are ready for a flying elbow off the top turnbuckle. Uh, <laughs> Um. Uh, yeah. So we got the shirt, shorts, jogger pants. They're pretty thin, so they're not going to be a winter pant, but they're going to be a good jogger. And then, that's not all. There's a matching jacket too. <laughs> I, I think it's the same cut as the other say sky jackets although this one seems to have like a little bit of mesh in the hood which i think is new i don't think the water camo one had that but uh it's got the say sky badge on the left chest say sky word mark on the back right some reflective elements on the back i think these are reflective it's black but it's the kind of like reflectives come a long way i guess let's see if there's any pockets in this jacket no reflective elements on the sleeve it's a little bit of a cuff so keeps all the water out if it is lightly raining i don't think it's a waterproof jacket i don't oh there are pockets it's so it's like can't it is like a camo um zipper pockets on each side so there you go let's get this on we're gonna have the full outfit Here we go. So we got, we'll do this, the jacket. I still got the tags in on it, but I'm gonna go with it anyway. What, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out like, what background material would make, could I blend into on this? I look at like, like can you imagine this? Like this all together? It's a lot of doodles. <laughs> But this jacket's awesome. I love it. I love the fit. I uh, love the pockets on here. Yeah, I'm going to rock this. Stevie76 says you should take this for TRE. It's a good TRE look. I think so. Um, I like it. Can you imagine, again, if there's like six or seven people with this outfit? I feel like, did Say Sky have a booth? I think Say Sky had a booth at TRE this year. I feel like everyone at the Say Sky booth should have this. And the Say Sky booth should have a wall that's this doodle print. And then, you, and then you just stand there like this and then jump out when someone comes into the booth. <laughs> uh, uh, C-Town fans, it works for you, Co. Uh, I, I like it. I like it a lot. It's a comfy coat, comfy jacket. Uh, I am a little bit chilly right now, too, so this is actually perfect. I think I'm just going to keep wearing this the rest of the, the show today. Uh, Vanessa Martinez says that's not made to blend in. I feel like though, this is one of those things, at least for me, I, I got an astigmatism. I'm colorblind. Like my eyes are terrible. I do feel like it's one of those things where it just makes my brain not work for a second because there's so much going on. Like when there's like this and this both happening, that's just a lot. And then can you imagine like if you're you're wearing this right you see someone wearing this full body and then like oh so is warm sure is warm today and they unzip and then there's more of that i think that's i think that's going to be pretty wild <laughs> uh go running well i was it looks like an undercover car from road and track magazine that's it that's it you don't really know what i'm wearing you can't tell you can't tell where the contours are so yeah <laughs> Ken is about to like, new game is where's Co. <laughs> John Boy says, you pair with those Mizuno Wave Rebellions? I do feel like this, it, does, it goes well. Look at that. This works. This works. This whole outfit together. Next time I run in these, I'm going to wear this. You won't be able to see. You won't know where I, where the shoe ends and where I begin. It'll be. 
you know, people will just won't know. There, it's like uh, it's not camouflage. It's just makes your eyes hurt in a good way. You know what I mean? Like your brain just can't figure it out. Shannon says, "I'm a blooming onion of zebra." I guess. <laughs> Michael I says, "What shoe? I don't even see a shoe." <laughs> <laughs> Scott Hilton says, "Is cookies and cream co?" I, uh, I'm, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not super adventurous when it comes to my apparel. You know, I like black and gray. Um, but Mika says, you know, Say Sky makes the best prints. Went with total flower power print from next summer's trail apparel as they were on clearance sale. Nice. Um, yeah, they're not scared. They're not scared to um, take some risks. And uh, I, just so you guys know, this doodle art, it's kind of like navy. I don't know if it's showing up as black and white. It's not black and white. It's like a bluish tint to me. Um, ben Kennedy, Kennedy says, I uh, need a bucket hat with the same pattern. I don't need the bucket hat, though, because there's a hood. You know what I mean? Oh, my goodness. This is like I'm camo. I'm totally camouflaged. I don't know what I'd have to be standing against to be camouflaged, but I, I feel like I don't know. So I just feel like I'm blending in. I'm invisible. I'm invisible now. Getting Trent says it's a magic eye poster vibes. A little bit. A little bit. Miller Vernon says, it looks like a Jackson Pollock painting. I would wear that, like a Jackson Pollock print or like inspired, just paint splatter, you know? I would definitely do that. Mm -hmm. Shannon says, the Metaspeed Sky Edge Paris would look cool with that kit. I think it would. I mean, I think a lot of shoes would look good on this. It's just a lot. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I like this one. <laughs> Michael Concrete says, "As if my irons weren't straining enough." He says the print isn't in black. It yeah, it, it isn't. I don't. I gotta. I can totally adjust the color on my camera, and I I think I don't know why, but it tends to smush colors a little bit, so you don't get a lot of nuance. Frank said, "If you had a mask, it might be good for uh, for confusing the Big Brother AI cameras." Oh, I think so. But you know what I think happens? I think when the AI cameras get confused, it sends off a warning and that guarantees that you'll get stopped. You know what I mean? I'm not sure. They don't have, really have those. Do they have those in the US? I'm not sure if they have them. JC says I look like a giant camera code. <laughs> uh, and Ben Young said, Kraft advertised a Pollock shoe one or two TREs ago. Don't think they ever made it. Oh, interesting. I don't remember that. Mm. Zachary Hymas says, you uh, scan the jacket to open the Say Sky site. That's nice. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Steve 76, I just got to get a matching dog sweater. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine if I if this came in a dog print too? Or a, a, a print on a garment for dogs? That'd be pretty fun. <laughs> and Calvin says, oh, they definitely have Big Brother AI cameras in the US. Oh, they do? What? Oh. Mm. Calvin says, there's a credible conspiracy that the recapture prompts of matching objects with items is some AI training data also. I've heard of that as well. Hmm. Zachary Hyman says, Bandit has a couple of trippy items in their spring collection. They always have a couple of trippy items in the spring collection. Um, it's hard to buy Bandit sometimes. Everything that you want to get is always sold out. I mean, I guess that's a good problem to have if you're Bandit, you know? But I was taking a look at it the other day and I was like, mm, the stuff that I want to get, not available. But you know what I did see? Um, Habtamu Chaney has put out a new video the other day. He was doing some 400s. Everybody's doing 400s. What is this fuzz? Um, everybody's doing 400s. I love this jacket, guys. Um, but he was doing some 400s, and he was, like, lacing up his shoes. And he had a 
different pair of bandit socks that I'd never seen before. I was like, oh, I want those bandit socks. They look nice. It looked like a different kind of material. So I'm curious. Those are not on the website. Michael I says, say Sky has matching socks at the moment. <laughs> I can't. I can't. That's, I mean, at what point? <laughs> Is there a hat? Because the blue camo came with a hat. That had a hat. I still have the hat. Um, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Vanessa Martinez says, maybe Cole can use his outfit to hype in the computers when they inevitably take over. It's like a, you know, pig, loaf of bread, pig, loaf of bread. Or was it dog? Uh, Mitchell's versus the machines, anybody? Goodness, I love that movie. Have you guys seen that one? That is my... That's one of my favorite movies. I just love it. It, it, it. The animation is fun. The the comedy is fast paced and quirky, and uh, I like the storyline as well. You know. <laughs> Might as well grab the face mask and fully commit to your new DJ lifestyle. <laughs> And there's a white on white. Mika Katai says there's a white on white version of this. Oh, I feel like the white on white would be sharp. You know what my favorite socks are? Even though I don't like white socks, they made a um, white with like white speckles. And those white speckles are uh, reflective. Um, there's a black one and a white one. And the black one looks like star, like glitter stars on your socks. And the white one looks super clean. And it has it's the white on white with the white part is reflective. So cool. JC says that outfit is bound to trigger some form of, wi form of wildlife. Be careful. You know what I saw today on my run? Uh, what do they call red winged blackbirds or red tip blackbirds or red crested blackbirds? The ones that are super territorial and organized. Those ones. Um, I saw one on my run today. I'm like, is it is it already nesting season? I was like, I think he was sending me a warning shot, you know? I bet you this either enrages them or terrifies them. <laughs> yeah, they're just called red wings. Red wings. Red wing blackbirds. Yeah, I thought it was like red wing blackbirds. Those guys, I can't stand those birds. There's so many of them near my mother in law's house. Uh, there's one route that I run. Well, basically every, they're also in my, all, along the running routes in Guttenberg. They're even worse over in the hills of Guttenberg. Um, there I've been like a swarmed by them before. And because they're organized, one will fly along and like peck at my head as I'm running. And then when I get too far away from its central location, another one will take over. It's just those things. They're organized. Chicken Run is also another one of my favorite movies. So some of my favorite animated movies. Mitchell's vs. Machine is really high up there. Chicken Run is another one that's also really high up there. I also like the wrong trousers. I think that's better because of its, it was one of the earlier ones, but it's not a full length movie. So I'll just say Chicken Run. That's a good one. Um, the Spider-Man one with all the different Spider-Mans from the different timelines. Is that Into the Spider-Verse, that one? That's really good. What am I missing? I'm sure I'm missing a couple, but those are some of my favorite ones. Mm. Frank says, I used to be pretty good at having conversations with the Red Wings. What sound do they like? You know what I know that the only thing that I know that they don't like, they don't like reflective things. So I usually just flicker my GoPro at them and hopefully the sun will catch one of the screens and reflect. That's the only thing that keeps them away. Waving the GoPro at them as like a big stick, that doesn't phase them at all. Mm. David DeFrancis says, Claymation is my biggest nightmare. You know what's also another good movie? Speaking of not Claymation, but stop motion. Uh, and I had a conversation about it with Tracy Smith at the um, Bussy Woods Kofuzi Run Club. Isle of Dogs. Have you seen that? I think Bill Murray's in it. It's about these stop motion dogs on an island called Isle of Dogs. Um, and I didn't know that Isle of Dogs was a real place, but it's a real place in London, which I'm going to go visit. And if there's not full, if it's not full of dogs, I'm going to be very upset. You know? mm. 
Nataku says, have I seen Spirited Away? You know, I have, I have, you know, I tried to watch that on the way to Tokyo, um, but I couldn't find a way to download it and I didn't want to buy it. I think I should probably go buy it. I feel like I would like all of those movies from the Studio Ghibli. I feel like I would like those a lot, you know. Funeral 1977 says, the one where the penguin disguises a chicken forces Gromit out of the house is heartbreaking. I feel like that's a metaphor for, for having a bit uh, when there's a, a baby sibling. That one really was upsetting to me too. Do you have a younger sibling, Fiona? <laughs> I feel like the people that that resonates with the most are older siblings. <laughs> Ed Chan says, my favorite Kofuzi videos are when he's chased by things, dogs, horse flies, et cetera. Oh, that time I was running up in Devil's Lake in Wisconsin. That, those bugs were mean. Very, very mean. They would sit on my hat when I tried to run away from them. They would just sit on the hat and wait. And then I slowed down and they would get off and then start biting me again. Crazy. Crazy. Um, I did see a bunch of wild, I guess they're around here, they're all wild deer. But a bunch of deer over by Rotary Park uh, today. By the way, guys. I almost forgot to tell you, the car is fixed. Uh, apparently, the starter shattered. I don't know what that means, but that's the word the mechanic used. The manic mechanic calls up and he goes, hey, so I'm taking a look at your car. And uh, I tried to start it, and it makes a really weird, tar terrible noise. And I'm like, thinking to myself, that's usually not how mechanics describe stuff. You know, he's like, well, so I took off the cross member and did blah, 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 blah. And I was like, uh, it's like Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 wah. I didn't understand what he was saying. He said, it looks like your starter is shattered. And I was like, oh, okay. He's like, it's kind of hard to get to. It's behind all this stuff. So I don't know if it's heat problem or if it's just old. But uh, I was able to turn over the engine manually without a starter. It turns over fine. So it's not an engine problem. I think it's just the starter. And I was like, okay. Can you get it fixed? He's like, I can order a new part. And he had, he had it ordered, had it the next day, and it was fixed. Drives. I drove it today. Drove it to run. Drove it to the grocery store. Drove it to get packages. That's like three to the five places that I go. It's like 60%. I went to 60% of the places I go to in Crystal Lake in one day. So it was good. Car, car, car lives for another day, you know. Um, Shannon says, I'm glad you called marath hired marathon towing. I think that's what it was. That was, the, that was the runner magic. That was the marathon magic it needed to keep going for another day. We thought it hit the wall, but no, there was more. There was more. Um, so yeah. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. But I got to bring it back because uh, one of the things I like about the mechanic is that uh, when you do bring it in, they'll do an inspect, like full kind of like look at everything for it. And there's a lot of other work that it could use. Um, so I'm going to bring it back in a couple of weeks. Do some more work on it. A lot of stuff that needs to replace brake pads, air filters, stuff like that. That they're like, hey, these are getting near end of life. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, let's take care of some of these other punch list items too. So for a while, I was like, ah, how much money do I want to stick into the car? And now I'm like, now that I lost it for a couple of days, I was like, no, I want it back. So now I'm ready to stick some more money in it, I guess. <laughs> are you sure this is a real mechanic yeah this is a guy that rebuilt the transmission in that car so he knows what he's doing so uh <laughs> the car is feeling fresh post marathon <laughs> it's recovering well it's covering well. michelle demayo says lol marathon towing for the win nice uh video says little skinny drivers at marathon towing he was just a regular guy who wasn't trimmer than you would think of you think of a tow truck driver i guess but i don't know I got into this ra weird rabbit hole of a uh, a tow truck driver who repossesses cars. There, he just has a bunch of YouTube shorts. Oh man, I went into a rabbit hole with that one. Um, but he's 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 not what I would expect a tow truck driver to look like, you know. Getting to run says that's why it's named Marathon Towing. You always say it's just the once, and then you keep going back. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't keep going back. Hopefully, I never see them again. But, you know, I feel like that was, that, that, I think that was part of the magic, you know. JC says, I had a little trouble starting the Xterra after bragging on it on Tuesday, <laughs> but it's fine for now. All right. Well, hopefully you have many more miles. I don't know who it was, but someone messaged me and they were like, uh, they had a car with like 300,000 miles on it or something like that, or a high mileage car. And it got towed 
or he was at the shop and he was talking to someone that worked at the shop getting driven around in a truck and uh that truck had 900,000 miles on it 900,000 miles the work truck and he's like we're just scratching the surface with these cars don't give up and I was like okay all right all right that's the mo- that was the message I needed to hear when I needed to hear it you know Adam says, doesn't your uncle or some relative work on cars? Yeah, Uncle David. He has a shop in Guttenberg. Guttenberg's about a good 220 miles from here. That's the, only, that's the only problem with Uncle David. And uh, I could probably drive that car that far. I, I don't know that I want to. Like, I was going to do that track meet in Indianapolis. I think it's actually next weekend. Um, or is it? No, it's in two weekends. Um, but I'm not going to do that anymore. But I was probably going to drive it there. So I'd feel comfortable driving that far, I guess. You know. Lalo P says, I'm a truck driver. Oh, there you go, Lalo. Nice. There was a YouTube channel that I used to follow for a while. I don't know if she's still making videos. But it was a woman who was a runner and a truck driver. Like, long-haul truck driver. I'm not sure I'm using the right words. But, like, multi like, long trips. And so, like, she would um, document her running. She'd be like, well, stopped at this rest stop. There happens to be a nice little walking path over here, and it'd be like a three-mile loop through a park that's next to a highway. And I'd be like, oh, that's a nice find. I'm like, this is useful information. Um, and then she'd be like, and then, at the rest, and then at the truck stop, there's showers. You can get cleaned up after your run and get on to your next stop. I was like, this is cool. And the, the channel never had more than, like, 200 subscribers. And... It kind of made sense, but I really like the channel. Miguel Sanchez says, I was a truck driver for 10 years. That's cool. A lot of my wife's, uh, on my mother-in-law's side, a lot of those, some of the men over on that side were truck, truck drivers for a long time. They're all retired now, but they were truck drivers for a long time. That's a hard life. I wanted to be a truck driver for a long time. Not for a long time, but for a while, I was like, I feel like that. When I was like much younger, I was like just on the road, listening to audiobooks, radio, singing along song. I'm like, that would be great just driving all the time. I feel like that'd be great. And I was like, I don't think I would have been cut out for all the other hard parts of it. But like the driving a lot seemed like it was fun. Just getting on a radio. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. Well, Mika says, a Volvo with over a million kilometers on the clock is not a rare thing over here. Wow. There is even a yearly meet locally? That's incredible. Now, I want, so those are, those Volvos have been around for a long time. Are those pre Ford buyout? Because Ford owns Volvo now, right? I wonder. I wonder if there's a difference. Stevie76 says, Amazon drivers with YouTube channels is very entertaining. Oh, I've not been down that rabbit hole before. That could be a problem. I'm, I'm going to stay away from that. And Luis says, I'm an accountant of a truck business. Those that counts. Mm. Nice. Um, Matthias Fenton says, have, have you noticed youngster Hans Troyer, I believe? Straight from college to ultras? I'm sure if I, if I saw the face, I would know. But the name sounds familiar because it's an unusual name, but maybe not i don't know i'll look him up video says i can't drive for long i fall asleep after about an hour how do they do it yeah i don't know it's a different it's a different it's 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 a lot of work it's hard it's hard work uh for sure mm. oh leona says speaking of audiobooks matthew perry's is very good a bit sad oh Maybe I'll take that, check that one out next. I don't know what I'm going to do for my next audiobook. I did download one. It's about, uh, I haven't started it yet because I'm also listening to another like running history book, that one Fire on the Track, about the first women of the uh, track and field women in the Olympics. And it's not overlapping times exactly, but it might a little bit. The, this book is about... Um, the race to the first sub four mile. It's not a new book, but um, I just downloaded that one. So that's kind of next in the hopper, but I don't think I want to do two running history books in a row. So 
I'm gonna find something else. CJ says, 12 year old code dreaming about listening to audiobooks. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I used to like, also my favorite food used to be hot dogs and like, uh, like road trip snacks, like everything about like stuff that I feel like would be really hard on me now. Like it's just stuff that I loved back when I was growing up. So I was like, that would be fun. My, 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 uh, my kind of like uh, high school into college kind of like wild hair, which I don't know if I, maybe if I'd grown up at a different time, I, I would have done it. You know, um, I just couldn't figure out how to like finance it and all that kind of stuff. But I wanted to do a seven and seven, seven years, seven jobs, you know, and then write a book about it or something. Um, seven and seven. I also liked seven and seven, the drink in college a lot. But anyway, um, so that's kind of where that idea came from. Like truck driver would be one. Working on a farm would be another one. There's a bunch of different jobs. Um, I guess that's kind of like this premise of like dirty jobs, I guess, too. But it wasn't about like that, but just jobs that I thought would be really interesting to do for a year. Louis says, I follow <laughs> I follow a UPS driver. There's all about UPS driver or Amazon drivers on, on social media. Louis says, I follow a UPS driver that gives food to the dogs. Funny what a dog does for treats. Oh, now that, that sounds fun. That sounds fun. And Shagat says, uh, Volvo has a million mile club stateside. A million mile club? Especially their five cylinder engine tends to last forever if you keep the oil changes regular. That's amazing. A million mile club? I'm not even 20% of the way there. I looked at the odometer in my car. It's 194,000. Here's the thing. I think we got it. I can't, I don't have to ask my wife. My wife will know. I don't, I don't remember at what mileage we took it over from my mother-in-law. I don't remember when we bought it from her at. But most of those are still my mother-in-law's miles. She used to drive a long way to go to work every day. So she spent a lot. And then she had all these grandkids and all these grandkids that I have to go to their graduations and stuff now. That's why May is always a tough month for me. And it has been for like the last half decade. She was going to all their swim meets and baseball games and all that stuff. So she put in a lot of miles on that car. All right, Mika says, all right, so Volvo is owned by Geely, a Chinese company. I didn't know that. Those Ford slash Volvos were really known for their bad reliability. And those which were made in Sweden usually last. I'm commuting one hour each way, so reliability is key. Mm, interesting. My mom really likes Volvo. She wants one of, what is it, the XC90, the SUV? She really wants one of those. But I think those are from the far Ford Volvo. I think maybe they still make it, but I don't know. Interesting, I didn't know that the ownership had changed. I thought they were still Ford. Hmm. Adam wants to know, uh, going back to my high school days and enjoying hot dogs, did you wish you were an Oscar Mayer wiener? I, you know, I was the right age right when that campaign came out, you know? Um, but I did not like Oscar Mayer hot dogs. That was not my favorite. I felt like those were bologna dogs. I did not like those. I liked all beef hot dogs. Sabrettes, if you grow up on the East Coast or if you've ever been to a game at the Garden, you know what Sabrettes are. That's the best kind in the world. Second best after that is a company called Bests. Sometimes I like Bests more than Sabrettes. Both really good hot dogs. Delicious with ketchup. Uh, ketchup, spicy brown mustard, sauerkraut if you got it. That's how I would normally take it, you know. And then, like, I was remember watching a interview with the guy that I don't know if he owns it or runs it or what. The face of uh, Vienna, the Franks that are popular here in Chicago, and they were like, we specifically designed the play, play, flavor profile so it wouldn't taste good with ketchup. And I'm like, that's a weird way to design a hot dog. Why don't you just make it taste how you want it to taste? If you taste good with ketchup or not, it seemed very petty to me. But I don't know. That's because I grew up enjoying ketchup on my hot dogs. Sega Dreamcast says, you ever get to see the Oscar Mayer Arena Mobile? That'd be a cool job driving that around the country. I do think it'd be fun. One of my friends from college, he, he he's from Wisconsin. And I guess that's where it usually hung out. And so uh, he said he, he rented it out for the prom, him and his buddies. You could rent it out. 
I don't know. I'm guessing there were multiple. There were were there more? I don't know if there were more than one. But he said they rented out for the prom and they showed up in the prom for the prom in the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. I don't know how many people it sits. I knew at some point he told me, but I don't remember. All right, Steve Blackadar has got a question about the jacket. Does it fold into itself? I have a Hoka one that does that, and it's a great, and that's great for for iffy weather. I don't think so, because usually when the jackets fold into themselves, it folds into a pocket. Um, but one of the things I didn't realize until after I showed it to you guys, um, then I was looking at it later, is the Boston Marathon celebration jacket folds into itself. Um, and I don't know. These zippers aren't reversible, so I don't no, so that doesn't look like it's supposed to be that way. I think you probably could fold it into a pocket. It's thin enough. But it doesn't look like it's like specifically designed for that. Oh, but it is ventilated in the armpits. I hear there's little perforations in the jacket, so that's nice. Yeah, I don't think it is designed for that, but... But let's see if I can stuff it into this pocket anyway. Let me cut this tag part off. It fits. It tucks into its pocket. You can't zip it because the zipper's not double sided. But if you wanted to do this and then put it into a bag, definitely works. This is, look at this though. For the win. Right here, say sky, for the win. See that? Nice. <laughs> Jen Run Triangle says, I'm so, so close to finishing win at all costs audiobooks. Audiobook. I can't believe I hadn't heard more about that book when it came out. I remember reading, I have read that book on audiobook too. Um, I remember when it came out. It came out during kind of during pandemic time, right? Something like that. Um, that might have been why you didn't hear about it. There's a lot of other stuff going on in the world at the time. Um, but that, yeah, crazy stuff. Crazy stuff in that book. Mm, oh, Matt Byer says, I just passed 200,000. Uh, 200,000 miles on my car yesterday. Didn't see it click. You didn't see it? Oh my goodness. Hmm. You're just gonna have to wait till 300,000 then, Matt. <laughs> uh, Kevin says, did you modify the fit of your new non-elite hat or is it the same shape and size as Path Project's existing models? Um, I didn't modify the fit of it for mine for the new non-elite hat, but it fits bigger in the crown than the trucker hat. I think it's the Big Ben Trucker 2 is what the original non-elite hat is. And then this one, it's not mesh in the back. Um, but the fit is uh, a little bit bigger than the other five panel hat that they have. So there's a little bit more room in here. I actually don't love the fit as much because it's a little too roomy for me. Um, but if you need more room in the top, then... It's going to be a good fit for you. Um, and I do have an update on that. I think it's going to be, Forrest emailed me the other day because um, I forgot, even though it's in my to-do list, I forgot to email Forrest. Did I tell you guys about this already? Forrest emailed and said, they're projecting second week of March. It should be ready. So I'm guessing like, oh, sorry. All right, I got to get going. I got a, uh, I forgot my interview is on right now. So I got to go. But second week of March. Well, that's when the new non-elite hat will come up. So uh, I got to get going. I'm late for an interview. Uh, but I will see you guys tomorrow for another live stream. Same time as today, 1 p.m. Central Time. Until I see you again, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.